Hi, in this video I'm going to be doing an oil change on this car. This happens to be a C-Class Mercedes. I think it's a W203. Right, this is the OEM oil filter, which you'll need as a replacement. And then you'll need oil. Now, obviously I'm not going to get into the discussion about which oil to use. Uh, it depends on the country, for example, the weather. Uh, you might want a 5W30, you might want a 5W40. So I'll leave that uh, debate to the forums. Overall, you'll need your oil and some basic tools. And you will need some thinners and maybe uh, some rags. During the video, you might see me use one or two other tools. But overall, this is a very basic service and you don't need very specialized tools. Right, to do an oil change on a car, it's easiest if you can just put the car on a ramp. As you can see, I've got the ramps there. If you don't have ramps, it's fine. You can just use a jack and then jack it up and use the trestles. Now, very important to have the car in gear, handbrake up and chock the wheels. That means put a brick or something to block the wheels just in case the car wants to roll off. Okay, now I don't know if you noticed the car was on and I've actually let it run for a little bit of time. The oil must be hot when you uh, drain it. That's how you get the most oil out of the car. If you don't want to do it that way, it's fine. You can do it with cool oil, but the most effective oil change is when the oil is runny and it can come out quickly when the car is warm or you've just driven it. All right, so we're going to need to release this plate to get the, to the oil, the sump. So it's a number 13. And just support it with your arm. As you can see, my arm is now supporting it. And you can even use your knee. And now I'm going to let this down, come, okay, let this come down slowly. Right, there we go. Alright, now I just need to take this plastic plate off. It's got four screws, size eight. One. Two. Three. Right, there is the sump plug, which happens to be a bolt, and it's a number 13 head. It's pretty tight, and there's a copper washer there, and you're going to have to open it. Notice I'm wearing gloves because the oil here is hot. Also, there's a bucket sitting over here, and the bucket is not placed directly under it. It's placed a little bit to the side because this is going to squirt like that. It's not going to just go straight down, so that's why I've got the bucket a little bit further away. Now my advice is to kind of keep it pressed in while you're unscrewing it. I'm, I'm almost pressing in this. I'm almost pressing in this direction while I unscrew it, and then you know you don't want to be burned by the oil. And then just towards the end, it'll want to pop out. And that point, you can grab the nut. If the nut falls in the bucket, it's fine. You get it. Later. You can see it's a fairly long uh, bolt. There you go. And the oil is wanting to come out almost and there we go okay so this is going to drain for a while now if you've got a busy workshop you you'll once that starts dripping you'll close it the oil filter housing is here at the back of the engine and you can see the size it's got a plastic head and I'm going to now remove it that is a size 27 okay so all you do is you just port it here and you turn Gently, might be a bit tight. There we go. There's the old filter. Just be careful not to drip the oil. Right, so what you do is you're gonna peel this off like that. You can see, there comes the old filter. Then you'll see there's some rubber seals. One, two and three. This is the part number for the new filter and you see that it comes with these new rubber seals. So these o-rings need to be put on this filter body. So I'm going to start with the one at the top here. And I'm just going to use a screwdriver to remove it. Okay, that one. I'm going to put the broken one, the old ones in a box. Now, if you want to, you can put some oil on it just so that it 
goes over nicely. There we go. Now the middle one. You don't have to fight with it, it comes off pretty easily. Right. The heat makes the o-ring a little bit uh, less rubbery. It uh, gets a little bit um, uh, less elastic. Right, so that's that one. And now this last one. Now keep in mind, it's not there. It's there. Many people make a mistake and stick it there. Okay, if you want to, you can just clean it. There's the new one and it's clean. Right now, this is unidirectional. You just put it in like that and you gently press it in all the way. And you can turn it a few times to make sure it's in. And there we go, that's it, it's in. Now it's up to you. I like to do it this way. I like to put some new oil just to drip around this O-ring. Okay, so this is brand new oil and I just put a drip around there, just a tiny bit. And now when I put it in here, I don't get any dirt on these rubber seals because on the root in, it's very easy to get dirt here because you can see that all these things are sandy. So I'm going to guide it in. I'm going to look there. And if you want to, you can clean the housing there, but uh, just be careful of getting lint, any, any dirt falling in. Now I'm just tightening it by hand. The lid says 24 Newton meters. So what I'm looking for is I'm going to reduce the torque wrench to 25. And I'm going to use the torque wrench to tighten this. If you don't have a torque wrench, it's fine. It's basically till it gets hand tight. Um, I'll show you. It's not even a quarter of a turn. It's like a, almost a sixteenth of a turn. And that's it. That's it. Finished. Don't over tighten that thing. The rubber seal stops the oil from coming out. Just now we're going to have to fill up the oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the filler cap. And this thing should not be very tight. So I don't know who last tightened this. But there we go. Just use the shifters to loosen it. Okay, so that's ready for topping up. I'm going to get the oils ready. And while I'm getting the oils ready, I'm going to go underneath the car and go and put the sump plug in. And, uh, and, and close up there. Right, now you can see the drips have come to an end. And what I'm going to do is I just take some thinners with a lint-free cloth again and I'm going to clean this opening really well. Okay, so you can see how nicely clean it is. And now very important is this bolt. Get all the sediment out of the threads. If you see there's sediment, it did fall and um, I'm going to just t turn it until all the sediment is out of the uh, threads. Right, now the next thing is, this thing must be completely dry. So I like to use thinners. I'm just going to dunk it in some thinners. It's completely immersed in thinners to get all the oil off. You see, there is a copper washer. Now, ideally, you should change this copper washer after each um, service. Now, they usually uh, give you a copper washer as part of the uh, oil change kit, but I didn't receive one. You can reuse this copper washer, so I am going to reuse it. It's not the end of the world. Um, just make sure it is completely clean there. You see it's totally oil free There we go. So totally dry It's uh, Got no oil on it and now I can just tighten this Okay, keep in mind that this is aluminium so you mustn't over tighten this thing All right, you could close up now the in the reverse order you put the plastic and then the steel plate
So we'll need a funnel. Okay, I've let the car stand for a few hours and it's on a flat surface and now you pull out the dipstick and you see that the oil is very low. So now it, you can totally top it up because the engine has been off. You can't measure the oil while the engine has, after the engine has been on because the oil is all in the engine. It needs to fall into the sump and that's why the dipstick is measuring in the sump. Right, then you depress the dipstick and uh, you check it still needs another liter. Right, now I'm happy with that. There it is. This is. Right, I'm happy with that. There's the line over there. And obviously the oil is still going to drip in and don't overfill your oil. It is not necessary to overfill the oil. Right, so you're done. Now just remember that you've just done an oil change so you don't over rev the car for the first 30 seconds. Let the oil circulate, let it get to operating temperature if you can and then you can drive as normally. But don't over rev in the first few minutes.